So, hope you are doing great. So, welcome for today's QA session. And today, I want us to cover a topic called probability theory. So, starting with probability theory, you need to ask yourself, what's probability? And probability is just a measure of likelihood that an event will either occur or will not occur. That's what we call probability. And then probability is applied under environment of uncertainty. That is, where the outcome are not, are not known well in advance or are not, not known with certainty. That's what we call probability. So under probability, so I want us to discuss something on that. So, and how do we compute probability? So this is the general formula of computing the probability, that probability is equals to desired outcome, you divide by the all possible outcomes. That's how you get the probability. And then we have some terminologies here. And the major terminology we have here is the mutually exclusive event. Now, the mutually exclusive events, they are events whereby the happening of one event prohibits the happening of the other events. That's what you call mutually exclusive events. And they are described using word or. So, for example, assuming we have two events, A and also we have B. So, if we are using the mutual exclusive, we are saying that happening of one will prohibit the happening of the other one. So, if we have two and they are mutual exclusive, so it's either A or B, but not A and B. A and B, that means you undertake them together. But when you say A or B, that means they are mutually exclusive. So, we are saying that they will be described using the word all, and they are handled using what we call additional rule of probability. So, we'll come uh, to illustrate on that. So that's what you call the mutually exclusive events. Then we have the independent event. Independent events, they are events where the happening of one does not prohibit or does not interfere with the happening of the other one. And they are denoted. So you're saying that they are events which can happen together. And they are described using the one and. They use the one and. And they are handled using multiplication rule of probability. So for example, assuming the same same, uh, we have two projects here. A, and also we have B. Assuming they are independent, where the happening of one does not, prohibit, uh, does not prohibit the happening of the other one. So that means we can undertake both A and B. So that's why you are saying that under independent uh, events, they will be described using the one and. Good. So what are the types of probability? We have two classification of probability. And one is what we call the subjective or axiomatic or theoretical probability. Now, theoretical probability is the probability is the probability obtained without actual experiment. So probability obtained without actual experiment. And therefore they are based on theories, feelings, or opinions. That's what you call the subjective or axiomatic or uh, theoretical probabilities. And secondly, we have the objective or empirical probability. So what are the objective or empirical probability? They are probabilities which are based on the actual experiment. That's what we call the objective or empirical probabilities. Good. So now I want us to look at various rules of probability. We look at various rules of probability. And one, we have what we call addition or additive rule. So what is additive rule? An additive rule, and this is used to analyze mutually exclusive events, and it shall be described using the word or and uses additional sign. So in this case, additional rule will only be applicable when we are analyzing mutually exclusive events. And therefore, they use the word or, and when you see all, they'll be used, uh, they'll be, uh, we'll be using an additional sign. So I want us to look at that illustration. We look at that illustration. We are told that given that the probability A wins is one over four, B wins one over five, C wins one over six, and D wins is one, of, uh, one over seven. What is the probability that only one will win? That only one will win. So that means this project are mutually exclusive. Only one will win. So that means solution is the probability where it's either A or B or C or D. Where only one will win. It's either A or B or C or D. And you have said that when you see the word or, what comes to your mind we should use additional sign. So that means our probability will be probability of A winning 
was 1 over 4. So you take 1 over 4 plus, or you use plus, eh? B wins, probability of B winning was 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5, or you use additional sign. C, C wins, the probability was 1 over 6, or you use additional sign. D wins, that's 1 over 7. And that's how you compute the probability that only one will win. Good. And in that case, you have it's 319 uh, divided by uh, over 420, which is equivalent to 0 0.76. That's the probability that only one will win. Good. You can look at that. So we look at the second uh, rule. That was additive rule. So, number two, we have what we call multiplicative rule. Multiplicative rule. And multiplicative rule, it's used to handle uh, or to evaluate uh, independent events. While the happening of one does not prohibit the happening of the other one. That means the project can happen together. So, and in this case, it uses, it uses word, and and a day and multiplication sign. So under this multiplicative rule, we are saying that it's used to handle uh, independent event, events, events eh, where the event can happen together without affecting each other. And they are you uh, they, uh, they are described using the word and and they uses the multiplication sign. Good. So with that, let's do an illustration on that. Illustration. So I have provided this illustration in your notes, so kindly go to your notes. And for those with the handout, they turn up to the handout at page six. Handout page six, that's where I have indicated all those illustrations. So we do an illustration, the multiplicative rule. We are told that A can hit a target four times in five trials, comma, B three times in four trials, and C two times in three trials. Calculate the probability that, so we are told that, a can hit a target four times in five trials. A can hit four in five trials. Mm -hmm. B, B can hit three times in four trials, three times in four trials, and C, two times in three trials. So that's what we are given. Then you are told that, find the probability that, number one, all will hit. All will hit. What does that mean? In this case, we have three outcomes, A, B, and C. What's the probability that all will hit? That is, that means that if all will hit, it's probability that A will hit, and B, and C. Yeah, that's probability of A and B and C. That's what we mean, all of them. So we say that when you use the word and, and will be presented by the multiplication sign. So this is what you do. Probability of A hitting, it's 4 over 5. This and you replace it by multiplication sign. B hitting is 3 over 4 times C hitting is 2 over 3. So that one and that one goes. That one and that one goes. So it will mean with 2 over 5. As simple as that. So it's 2 over 5, which is equivalent to 0 0.4. Mm -hmm. Number 2, number 2, that only B and C hits. Only B and C hits. So, I want you to be very keen here. In this case, they want the probability of two, but remember we had three outcomes. A, B, and C. So in this case, we are told that only B and C hits. So that means it's probability that only B and C, but remember we had three outcomes. A, B, and C. So it's B and C, that means but not. But not A. You have to complete your statement like that. In this case, it's only B and C. But remember, we had three outcomes, including the A. So that means, but not A. So, this will get the probability. Probability of B hitting was 3 over 4. You multiply by and, you multiply. C hitting is 2 over 3. Times, but not A. Probability of A hitting is 4 over 5. That means, A not hitting, it's 1 over 5. So you multiply by 1 over 5. You get that. And then number three, number three, only A and C hits. Only A 
and C hits. If only A and C hits, that means the probability that A will hit and C, but remember we had three outcomes, but not, what is not in this model, but not B. So that means probability of A hitting, A hitting was 4 over 5, we multiply by C hitting, probability of C hitting was 2 over 3, but not B, but not B. So probability of B hitting was 3 over 4. That means B not hitting will be 1 over 4. So you multiply by 1 over 4. As simple as that. Good. So that's all about multiplicative rule. So let's go to the other rule. Go to the other rule. Number 3 is what we call Bayesian or bias theorem. Or Bayesian rule. It's either Bayesian rule or Bayesian theorem. And Bayesian theorem, it's applied upon incorporating or events. It's applied to, uh, to evaluate the events upon incorporation of new information. So we write something there. That this is used <coughs> to revise probabilities. To revise probabilities. Upon acquisition, upon acquisition of additional information, upon acquisition of additional information. So, and how do we get probability in this? So, probability, remember, is that probability is equals to desired outcome, you divide by all possible outcomes. That's how you determine the probability. So let's uh, do an illustration on that. Illustration. So go to your handout. It's either use the theory, uh, the notes, for the notes I have indicated the question there, or you go to your handout at page 6. Handout page 6. So you are given a question there. We start with illustration number 1. Illustration number 1, we are told that Consider three identical bags, A, B, and C. Bag A contains two gold coins. Bag B contains two silver coins. And bag C contains one silver and one gold. So what's the probability of selecting bag A out of the three bags? So that's the first question. And also the probability of selecting a gold coin from bag A. So you see in this case we have gold and silver. And then it's either from bag A, B, or C. So you're told that consider the identical bag. So in this case, eh, we have three bags. So you can do this. Eh? You have three bags. You have bag A, bag B, and bag C. Then you're told that bag A contains two gold coins. So we have gold and we have silver. So that means we have two outcomes. Two outcomes, two outcomes. It's either gold, silver, gold, silver, gold, silver. We are told that bag A contains two gold coins. Bag A contains two gold coins. So it's two over two because we have two outcomes, gold and silver. That means probability of having silver, it will be zero over two. Then you are told that bag B contains two silver coins. Bag B contains two silver coins. So that means probability of having silver is two over two. What about gold? Bag B does not have any gold. So it's zero over two. And lastly, bag C contain one gold and one silver. So bag C contain one gold and one silver. So remember, we have two outcomes. It's gold and silver. So that means one gold, it's one over two, and one silver, one over two. So that's what we have. Eh? Then the first question was, what's the probability of selecting bag A out of the three bags? What's the probability of selecting bag A from the three bags? So whenever you're not given the probability, you give them or you allocate equal probabilities. That means since they are they were three, so you give it a third, a third, a third. If there were two bags, a half, a half. So now let's go to the main question. And also, what's the probability of selecting a gold coin from bag A? Probability of selecting a gold coin from bag A. Then you divide by, so let me take you back, eh? We are saying that probability is desired outcome, and that's what is that. Gold coin from bag A. 
you divide by all possible outcome. So for all possible outcome, that means you can get a gold coin from bag A, or we said or is denoted by plus, eh? or you can also get a gold coin from bag B, or use additional sign, you can also get a gold coin from bag C.